Sir Richard Branson and his Virgin Group have either created or partnered in a number of businesses, including a record business, an international airline, a domestic airline, a spaceflight company, for lack of a better description, a train line, a telecom company, a radio network, a hotel brand, and much more, including recently, a cruise line. Back in late 2014, Virgin Group announced that it was launching Virgin Voyages, a cruise line headquartered in the US with an initial home port of Miami. For several years, as Virgin developed the concept and the design, we didn't know much about their intended experience. However, Virgin has now initiated their major media blitz leading up to the launch of their first sailing in April 2020. Details about staterooms, dining, activities, and ports of call have been released over the last few weeks and months by Virgin. And finally, on Valentine's Day of this year, Virgin opened up bookings for their initial sailings to any and all sailors, as Virgin calls them, looking to give Virgin Voyages a try. But what particularly stands out about Virgin Voyages? How might they potentially disrupt the cruise market? And what do their prices look like? Let's talk about seven things to know about Virgin Voyages. <music> Hi everyone, this is Ben, and welcome back to Explore Informed, where we dig into the details of travel. So the next time we go exploring, we go better informed. Today we're talking about the new travel offering from the Virgin Group, Virgin Voyages, and seven things to know about the cruise line. Number one, where they are sailing. As of this moment, Virgin is expecting to set sail in April of 2020, and reservations are currently open for sailings through October 2020. Virgin Voyages will launch with one ship initially, the Scarlet Lady, but they have three additional ships on order anticipated to launch in 2021, 2022, and 2023. As they only have one ship, initial itineraries for the spring, summer, and fall of 2020 are somewhat limited and appear to only consist of four and five night sailings around the Caribbean. Primarily right now, we are seeing a few different options. Four night sailings to Havana where the ship stays overnight and basically acts as a floating hotel which is not unique to Virgin. NCL is doing the same thing right now. The ship will also stop at Virgin Voyages Private Beach Club in the Bahamas, which is another trend in cruising, at least in the Western Hemisphere. That trend being cruise lines maintaining private properties or islands to form a port of call on their itinerary. Virgin is also offering five night sailings to the Western Caribbean with stops in Costa Maya, Mexico, and again at the Beach Club, and five night sailings to the Dominican Republic stopping at the Beach Club there as well. I imagine we will see additional itineraries as we learn more about sailings beyond October 2020. I would also imagine that they will eventually expand to offer week-long sailings versus four or five night sailings only. I have seen a couple of theories which have not been verified or validated that perhaps the four and five night sailings are one, more attractive to new cruisers, who they appear to be targeting, and two, also may be caused by limited access to port facilities in the Port of Miami, which will change in 2021 when Virgin Voyages' custom-built $150 million cruise terminal opens in Port Miami. Number two, their unique business model. What stands out the most to me about Virgin Voyages, honestly, is the business model with which they are approaching their new cruise line. At least based on the initial plans and information released to date, they clearly have a different experience in mind from what you see on a traditional cruise line. And I'm not talking about simply adding go-karts bumper cars, indoor skydiving, or a boardwalk complete with a carousel to an otherwise normal cruise ship and experience. Virgin appears to be targeting a younger, hipper, or new to cruising crowd from top to bottom, from the dining options to the entertainment, the ship itself, and the onboard activities. Additionally, the decor and physical design are clearly geared towards a different audience. Rooms have mood matching lights and will be controlled via tablets. You'll find hand-woven hammocks on the balcony, juice bars right next to the gym, and yes, you guessed it, a tattoo parlor. The entertainment has been described as wonderfully strange and off, off, off Broadway. I imagine something more close to an absinthe in Vegas than a cruise version of a Broadway classic. Up and coming DJs will be featured and the cruise line will host a Scarlet Night party on board. And all this may sound a little bit out there, I get it, but it's honestly exciting to me. It's probably not my first choice for cruise experience, but I applaud them for trying something different. And I'm excited to see whether it's successful and whether Virgin Voyages causes any disruption to the mainstream cruise market. Number three, the design of their ships. Because Virgin Voyages is designing a different experience than what you might get on Royal Caribbean, NCL, Carnival, or even Disney, they have designed their ship a bit differently as well. Scarlet Lady is being built in Italy at Fincantieri Shipyards. It will be 912 feet long carry 2,700 guests, and measure 110,000 gross tons. As a point of comparison, Carnival's Vista class comes in at around 1,055 feet and 3,900 passengers. Norwegian's Bliss comes in at just shy of 1,100 feet and carries 4,000 passengers. And Royal Caribbean's Oasis class blows all those away size-wise, measuring 1,180 feet, can carry over 6,000 passengers, 
and it is over twice as large as Scarlet Lady in terms of gross tonnage, coming in at 226,000 gross tons. So Virgin Voyage's Scarlet Lady is on the smaller side when compared to the more recent offerings of their competitors, and is more comparable size-wise to some of the mid-market offerings or older ships out there. But despite its slightly smaller stature, Virgin Voyages has packed a lot of punch, with modern design, modern features, and fun amenities. In addition to the juice bar and tattoo parlor, Virgin has built in a two-story, three-bar nightclub space called The Manor, a pool and relaxation area called the Aquatic Club, an entertainment space that appears to be transformable from a traditional theater to a flat floor configuration, a gym featuring a dedicated space for fitness classes, an outdoor yoga space known as the Crow's Nest, and of course a spa. Number four, Virgin includes a lot of extra in their cruise fares. As part of the unique business model, the four thing that stands out to me are the inclusions in the pricing offered by Virgin. Virgin Voyages is taking a somewhat unique approach to what is included in their pricing, and is throwing in a number of things that ordinarily will cost you extra. Now you're probably saying to yourself, they just raise the prices to accommodate these items, and that may in fact be correct. But I personally prefer an all-in price in most occasions, as long as the inclusions are not excessive, Virgin Voyages is including unlimited Wi-Fi, which most cruise lines charge a decent premium for, all restaurants and dining options, so no extra fee for the good food, which is common on other cruise lines and labeled as specialty dining, to try to convince you it shouldn't be a part of the standard fare. Workout classes, basic beverages, so filtered still and sparkling water, non-pressed juices, sodas, teas, and drip coffee. And last, but certainly not least, tips and gratuities, which can come out to a couple hundred bucks. This is all baked into your standard Virgin Voyages pricing, so there is less need to worry about your onboard budget. Number five, food, 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 food. Because Virgin is not implementing any add-on fees for dining, all sailors will be able to enjoy all restaurants on board as part of their standard cruise fare. Virgin has announced to date a retro steakhouse, an upscale Mexican joint, a vegetarian space, the Test Kitchen, which they describe as a cooking laboratory, Korean barbecue, an outdoor lounge and restaurant, an Italian option, and perhaps most interestingly, Virgin has ditched the traditional buffet space and replaced it with a food hall, which is going to include a bakery, pastry shop, taco shop, panini shop, a sushi bar, noodle bar, soups, salads, and a 24-hour diner. Now, most cruise ships are widely varied in their food offerings these days, so that comes as no surprise, and I consider that to be table stakes. And we'll have to see if the execution of the food hall actually feels different than a traditional cruise buffet. But the good news is that you have a variety of options to choose from, and you don't have to pay extra for any of it. Number six, the more interesting changes. I would consider most of the changes or potentially disruptive features that I have described so far to be largely positive. So I wanna call out a few things that are also different that may not be viewed as quite as positive. Some of you will be all for them and others maybe not. First off, Virgin Voyages will be an adult only experience, so no kids allowed on board. I am a father and I love traveling with my kids, but I do see the appeal of no children on board. Second, apparently you cannot pick a specific cabin when booking without calling the Sailor Services crew or your travel agent. Instead, you are assigned the best available cabin in your class. The problem with that, of course, is that best available cabin is relative. And thirdly, no beverage packages will be offered on board. Virgin claims to be pricing drinks reasonably, but no drink packages appear to be available in their initial plans. And finally, number seven, the pricing. There has been a lot of chatter about pricing and a lot of people expressing opinions that the Virgin Voyages pricing is much higher than average. So I priced out a few different options comparing them to Norwegian as they had the most similar sailings out of Miami. NCL is also sailing on four and five day itineraries to Mexico and Cuba at the same time as Virgin. The first few sailings in April and May of 2020 are much higher, which should be expected for any new type of product launch. That is really no surprise. However, I found that the prices did eventually settle after the first few months of sailings and ended up to be very similar to that of NCL. Pricing for the same stateroom class was basically equivalent for both on a five-day Western Caribbean sailing in August of 2020 and a four-day sailing with a Havana overnight in October. Now, this is a very, very brief comparison and not a comprehensive analysis of their entire pricing strategy. And there are other things that factor into pricing, as we know about NCL's free at sea benefits that bake in a drink package at no additional cost. And as discussed, Virgin includes Wi-Fi and tips in their pricing. So the moral of the story is, don't assume Virgin's prices are sky high. Pricing varies wildly based on destination, duration, hurricane season, and many other factors, and may be more reasonable than some might be saying. So in conclusion, I am not advocating for you to book Virgin Voyages. They did not pay me to make this video. This is simply a compilation of what I have learned 
while trying to find out what they are all about. I am excited about what they are offering and anxious to see how it works out and whether it impacts the industry as a whole. However, I realize it won't be a good fit for all cruisers and only you can decide what you want from your cruise experience. So you will still need to do your own research and find out if it's a good fit for you. So that marks the end of this episode. I hope you learned something new about Virgin Voyages. I learned a ton myself while doing the research for this episode. You can find us here on YouTube and also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Explore Informed. If you like this video or this channel, hit the thumbs up and subscribe button just below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you folks next time.